Consumer Electronics Show. That's what CES stands for. And in a year where plenty of others focused on the corporate side of their business, Intel definitely did have a consumer focus with the launch of their new Core Ultra Series 3 processors, also known as Panther-like. And Intel sponsored this video, as well as our trip out to CES this year, to go hands-on with exactly what they have on offer with these new processors that are already available for pre-order. Anyone who has watched our channel has known just how important this Panther-like launch was to Intel. It's the culmination of years of engineering and development by their hardware teams, but also by their foundry teams, since this is based on their own 18A node. And all of their hard work seems to definitely be paying off. Our time there started off with their keynote presentation, which yes, had plenty of AI in it, but one thing that I've appreciated about Intel's approach to AI over the years is that they recognize how important it is to localize it to the user's computer and not just store everything in the cloud. They even had the CEO of Perplexity on stage to discuss the strategy of implementing hybrid AI infrastructure, utilizing cloud aspects, but also leveraging the ability of local computers to process a lot of it without having to phone home to another their company server. But Intel also made sure to highlight all of the new enhancements that are going into the Core Ultra Series 3 processors. The goal is to have one architecture that can scale from thin and light laptops, but also be used in robotics, smart cities, automation, and more edge cases with over 200 different designs, all based on Panther-like. And the important part was to take the power efficiency that they had in their previous Core Ultra 200V Lunar Lake chips and combine it with the performance of the Core Ultra 200 H air lake chips and create something that has the best of both worlds. They're claiming all day battery life thanks to how the system is built for ultra low power. 50% more multi-threaded performance at similar power compared to their previous generation, but then it also scales really well at the higher power levels. And this is thanks to their Darkmont E cores, Cougar Cove P cores, and plenty more improvements that help with efficiency. They've also designed it to be an AI powerhouse with up to 180 tops on the platform when you combine the seat few cores with the next gen NPU5 and the XE3 GPU, which we'll talk about more in a bit. You combine that with their support for up to 96 gigabytes of memory, and you have a portable machine that can actually handle beefy LLMs. You add in the fact that you can get up to 9,600 mega transfers per second on some configurations, and these things appear to be memory powerhouses as well. But Panther Lake is also designed for maximum connectivity, up to 20 PCIe lanes on certain configurations with 12 of them being the freshest Gen 5 spec. And you also get Intel's Wi-Fi 7, Intel's Bluetooth Core 6, and Thunderbolt support, meaning these chips can be utilized in a bunch of different scenarios, use cases, and environments. And all of these enhancements make for a really exciting product, but being able to quote numbers from a stage is a different situation than actually getting real world testing with the products. And to Intel's credit, that's exactly what they did. We got the rundown from the keynote, but then we got a couple hours of actual hands-on time with the laptops that actually had the 18A produced Panther Lake chips. They had the Intel Core Ultra Lounge, where they had multiple systems showcasing and highlighting multiple different facets of what the Core Ultra Series 3 chips bring to the table. The AI showcase had local models running on them, utilizing Intel's AI performance to both do a localized, non-internet connected chat Bot, but then also showcasing how it can be used in a hybrid situation. They also showed off the exceptional battery life with a demo video conferencing call just running on an unplugged system with the power consumption being on track to hit that all day battery life claim. They also showcased how it can be leveraged for content creation with masking objects in a video editing suite and utilizing all of the new hardware enhancements to make some of that a reality. But the section where most people spent their time was at the gaming zone, a comfortable couch, Battlefield 6 loaded up on the TV, and plenty of more systems available for personalized testing with a bunch of different games. But to go even more in depth than that, 
We had an hour in the Intel Arc Zone. This was a presentation by their very own Tom Peterson, also known as TAP, who discussed a lot of the design decisions that went into making the new XE3 GPUs. The hardware has obviously been enhanced. You can get up to 12 XE3 cores on certain versions of the chips, and those have been engineered to be better at ray tracing, AI processing, and just gaming overall. They're claiming over 40% better graphics performance per watt for the efficiency versus Arrow Lake, but over 50% better performance versus Lunar Lake. 77% faster than the Core Ultra 9 288V is what they quoted from the stage. So yes, the insides are all better, but they also spend time making sure the software experience is also properly updated. There's some key enhancements with their new XESS3 software that allows for integrated graphics to do things like multi-frame generation. That's three AI generated frames for every one traditionally rastered frame. But but TAP spent a lot of time discussing how the biggest issue with frame gen is the lack of smoothness and the increased latency. So a lot of time was spent developing XCSS3 to have exceptional smoothness. And with my hour in the Intel Arc Zone, I can confirm that this isn't all talk. It actually works. So we had unfettered access to the Arc B390 integrated GPUs on the Core Ultra Series 3 laptops. They told us we could benchmark any game we wanted, whether it was pre-installed or not. And they had plenty of games pre-installed. And I was honestly, legitimately blown away by just how competent the gaming performance was with the ARC B390. And it's not just me. Go check out other people's detailed coverage of Panther Lake. And the takeaway is overall the same amount of being impressed with what Intel's been able to achieve here, especially in such a short time since the launch of their previous gen Lunar Lake chips. So not only was the regular raster gaming performance tremendously impressive, which I made sure to test amply in a lot of the games that I've been personally playing lately, but I was also shocked by how responsive and smooth the multi-frame gen was. I don't have a full benchmarking testing suite where I got detailed FPS numbers, but I'm hoping to review a Panther Lake laptop sometime soon to provide that for you. But based on my experience there, we had things like Intel's control panel for their ARC graphics, which allows you to inject XESS3 into any game with XESS2 support, which means that we did get to test out the MFG with a bunch of different games. And it was noticeably better and smoother to use than any implementation that I've used previously, single frame gen or multiple. This was honestly the best frame gen situation that I've ever experienced with perceived latency being imperceptible. And that is not something I can say about my other experiences with frame gen. And the visual quality was also exceptionally good with these implementations as well. Whether it was on the laptop's built-in monitor during the arc zone testing or on the TV at the Core Ultra Lounge, there was no noticeable noticeable or massive quality issues that can be seen in some other versions of AI upscaling. Ghosting, weird artifacts, funky changes that can sometimes happen with this type of upscaling was not something that was readily seen on these implementations. And it really does seem like Intel has hit the sweet spot with their graphics department with the implementation of the XE3 GPUs. Native performance is great, it's power efficient, and the AI additions are actually helpful additions, not just marketing gimmicks to give you higher numbers. I was able to play games at much higher settings than I thought could happen with integrated graphics with great response times and smooth frame rates. It's something that you'll have to truly experience for yourself. This is a next gen product from Intel that does things that their previous generations could only dream of. And as mentioned at the top of the video, you can experience this yourself. There are several Core Ultra Series 3 devices that are already available for pre-order. And again, big thanks to Intel for partnering with us to allow us to have real world hands-on time with their new chips. It is something that I now know I am most excited for in 2026 when it comes to the world of PC gaming, and I think you should be excited as well. And be sure to click the link in the description to learn more about Intel and what they have on offer with their new Panther Lake processors.